Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're diving into something super exciting, Entity Framework Core in .NET. We're going to explore how to easily set up EF Core, work with DB Context, and implement CRUD operations in an ASP.NET Core 9 minimal API project. So let's jump right in. Before we jump into the code, a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Entity Framework Extensions. If you're looking to speed up your database operations, this tool can help you insert Data 14x faster and cut your saving time by up to 94%. It works with bulk insert, update, delete, and merge, all integrated into EF Core. Check out the link in the description to learn more. All right, now let's dive into the project. I've already set up a minimal API with .NET Core 9 project, and I've defined all the CRUD API endpoints, customer services, and the customer entity separately. First, Let's take a look at the customer entity. Here, we have a class called customer, which is marked as sealed to prevent inheritance. The ID property is a GUID. The name and email properties are strings, initialized with empty values, ensuring that they're never null. All right, now let's take a look at the endpoints we've already defined for our CRUD operations. All of these endpoints are injected with the iCustomer service, which handles the actual business logic for interacting with the database. Next, let's dive into the customer service class. As of now, we've set up the class and the methods, but we haven't implemented the logic yet. Today, we're going to implement these methods using Entity Framework Core to actually interact with the database. You've seen that I've already set up the project, and now I'm going to add Entity Framework Core into our project. Let's open up the NuGet Package Manager and install the necessary EF Core packages. Since we're going to use SQL Server as our database, let's install the Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore. SQL Server Package. This will allow us to integrate Entity Framework Core with SQL Server seamlessly. Now that we've found the package, make sure to select version 9 because our project is targeting .NET 9. This ensures compatibility with our project's version. Let's go ahead and click the Install button. You can see the EF SQL Server Package is now added to our project. Okay, let's set up our DB Context. This is where the magic happens. It connects our application to the database and allows us to perform all the necessary operations like retrieving, adding, updating, and deleting data. Now, I'm going to add the DB context inside the database folder and call it application DB context. This will serve as our gateway to interact with the database. First, I'm going to make our application DB context class sealed. All right, let's implement the DB context now. And we want a public constructor which will take DB context options as an argument. This constructor is important because it allows us to pass configuration options to the base class, DB context, for setting up our database connection. Now, we need to configure the connection string for our database. This can be done in a couple of ways, and one of them is by overriding the onconfiguring method in our DB context class. Here, we can simply use the options builder use SQL Server method which takes the connection string as an argument to configure our SQL Server connection. I'll add the connection string right here. In this project, I don't use this approach. Instead, I'm going to configure the connection in program.cs. All right, I'll comment out this line here and configure the connection string in the program.cs file instead. Let's go to program.cs. Here, we can use builder.services.addDBContext and pass application DB context as a generic argument. Then, we can say options use SQL Server, method to pass, and configure the connection string. I will paste connection string here. Now, I'm going to refactor this part. Instead of hard coding the connection string, I'll pull it from the app settings.json file. First, I define a variable called connection string, and then use builder string. Give connection as default connection. However, this connection string is not available in the app settings.json file yet. We'll create it in a moment. Okay, now I will replace this hard coded connection with the variable we just created. All right, now let's go ahead and add the connection string section in our app settings.json file. Here, I will add a new section called connection strings in our app settings.json file. Inside it, I'll add default connection and paste our database connection string. Now, let's clean up the application DB context by removing the onconfiguring method because, at this point, it's no longer needed. We've already configured the connection in program.cs. Here, 
I'll make another change. I'll update the constructor to use the primary constructor, which was introduced in .NET 8 for classes. Now, we need to add a DB set for our customer entity. When we add a DB set, it will map to a table in our database. So, if we add a DB set customer, Entity Framework Core will create a table in the database to store all our customer entities. By default, Entity Framework Core will use the name of the DB set property, but it's a common convention to pluralize the name. The next step really is migrations. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, the great thing about the code first approach with Entity Framework Core is that we can write our code first, and the migration will handle all the database related setup for us. So, once we've written our models, YEF Core will automatically generate the necessary database schema, including tables and relationships, based on our code. This means we don't have to manually create the database or tables. YEF Core takes care of it for us, making the whole process super convenient and streamlined. So, let's go ahead and do that now. To use migrations, we need to add another NuGet package. This package is specifically for working with migrations and applying them to our database. All right, let's go to the NuGet package manager now. Next, we'll search for Entity Framework Core Tools in the NuGet package manager. Once we find the package, make sure to select the relevant version that matches our project. After that, go ahead and click the install button to add the package to our project. Okay. Now the package is added to our project. We're all set to start using migrations. Now, let's open the package manager console. This is where we'll run the commands to create and apply migrations. Now, let's run the add migration command in the package manager console. I'll give the migration the name initial create and press enter. When we run this command, Entity Framework Core will generate the migration file for us. This file contains all the necessary changes to set up the database schema based on the code we've written. As you can see, migration file has two methods, up and down. The up method contains the logic for applying the changes to the database, like creating tables or adding columns. The down method, on the other hand, contains the logic to revert these changes, essentially rolling back the migration if needed. Okay, now let's run the update database command. This will apply the migration and create the database and tables based on the migration file we just generated. The update database command was successfully executed. Now, let's open SQL Server Management Studio and take a look. As you can see, the customer DB database is there and it's all set up as expected. And it has two tables, one for our customers and EF migrations history table. All right, now that our database is created, let's move on and implement the customer service class. This class will handle all the business logic for managing customers and interacting with the database. First, I'll inject the application DB context into the customer service class. This will allow us to interact with the database through Entity Framework Core. Here, I'm using the primary constructor for the customer service class, which was introduced in .NET 8. Okay, let's first implement the getAll method. This method will fetch all the customer records from the database and return them as a list. Here we can use dbcontext.customers. to list async. I am adding return and await for async. I'm going to add that as no tracking to our query. This tells Entity Framework Core not to track the entities in the DB context for changes. It improves performance when we're just reading data because EF Core doesn't have to keep track of these entities in memory. The next best practice is to pass a cancellation token. This allows us to cancel the operation if it's taking too long or if the user navigates away from the page, improving the overall responsiveness of the application. I haven't added a cancellation token to the method yet, so I'm going to open the iCustomer service interface and quickly update the methods to include it. All right. Now let's update the methods in the customer service class. We'll include the cancellation token in all the async methods, ensuring that they can be properly canceled if needed. Now, let's go ahead and add the cancellation token to the toListAsync method. Now, let's implement the getById method. This method will fetch a customer by their unique ID. To implement the getById method, we're going to use findAsync. This method is designed to find an entity by its primary key which in our case is the ID. It's a fast and efficient way to fetch an entity when you already know its primary key. 
and we can convert its body into an expression body. This simplifies the method and keeps the code neat. Next, let's implement the method to add a new customer. First, we use DB context, customers, add customer, to add the new customer entity to the customer's table. Then, we call save changes async to save the changes to the database. If the save operation is successful, i.e., it returns a number greater than zero, we return true. Otherwise, we return false, indicating that the customer was not added. Okay, let's implement the delete by ID async method. We start by calling get by ID async to check if the customer exists in the database. If existing customer is null, it means the customer doesn't exist, so we return false. If the customer is found, we remove it using DB context, customers remove, and then save the changes with save changes async. If the operation is successful, we return true, otherwise false. Now, let's implement the last method, update. To keep things simple, I'll copy the delete by ID sync method we wrote earlier and make the necessary changes for updating the customer. As you can see, I'm first checking if the customer exists using the get by ID sync method. If the customer doesn't exist, we return false. Otherwise, we update the fields like name and email with the new values from the customer object. After that, we call save changes async to save the changes. If everything goes well, we return true. Okay, now that we've implemented all the methods in the customer service class, let's move on to the endpoints. We need to make the necessary changes because we've added a cancellation token to the methods, so we'll need to pass the token in our endpoint handlers. Quickly, I'll go ahead and add the cancellation token to all of the endpoints. By doing this, we'll pass the token to the relevant methods, like get all async, get by ID async, create async, update async, and delete by ID async. This ensures that the operations can be canceled if needed, improving the app's responsiveness. Now we're all done. Let's go ahead and run the application to see everything in action. In Postman, I've set up the endpoint requests to test our CRUD operations. First, let's run our Get All Customer Endpoint in Postman and see if everything is working perfectly by clicking Send button. As we expected, we got a 200 OK response, but the customer's array is empty because we don't have any customers in our database yet. Now, let's move on to the Create Endpoint and create a new customer. In the Post Method body, I have created some dummy customer data. Let's send a request and check if the new customer is created in the database. We got a 201 created status code, and the response includes the details of the newly created customer. This confirms that the customer was successfully added to the database. Let's run the Get All Customer endpoint again to verify that the new customer has been successfully added to the database. As expected, we got one customer in the response now. All right, let's check if the Get By ID endpoint is working. We'll pass the ID of the customer we just created and see if we can retrieve their details. This endpoint also returned a 200 OK status code and the customer details, confirming that the Get By ID endpoint is working as expected. Next, let's test the update endpoint. We'll send a put request with updated customer data to modify the details of the customer we created earlier. I've changed the email a bit to test the update functionality. We got a 204 no content response, indicating that the update was successful. Now, Let's go to the get by ID endpoint again to verify that the update was successful. We'll fetch the customer by their ID and confirm that the details, including the updated email, are returned. As expected, we got the updated email in the response, confirming that the update was successful. Okay, the last endpoint we need to test is the delete endpoint. We'll send a delete request to remove the customer we created earlier from the database. We got a 204 no content status code indicating that the customer was successfully deleted from the database and there's no additional content in the response. Now, let's go to the Get All Customer endpoint and see the result. Since we just deleted a customer, we should see that the list is updated and the deleted customer is no longer present. We can see that all our endpoints are working as expected, which means that EF Core successfully connected to the database and is performing all the CRUD operations smoothly. All right, that's it for today. We've successfully set up and tested our EF Core implementation with a minimal API. There are a lot of new videos planned for EF Core, where we'll dive deeper into advanced topics and best practices. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of them.
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding!